In the last waning months of the Giuliani administration, I got a call from an old friend in New York who asked if I would be interested in talking to the city planning department about the possibility of doing a redesign of Columbus Circle for real. And I said, absolutely. When we started work, it occurred to me that that very first design we did with the circles of trees, that was pretty fundamental. We had to get the circle going. We also felt that, I felt there was something wrong with the fountain. Uh, I didn't, it was like a little puddle and it, it seemed so feeble to be in this heroic space. I also realized that if we were going to make it work at all, we had to find some way to filter or screen mask the remarkable amount of traffic around it to make it uh, a kind of like a, a sanctum. So I realized there was a height, a, a height that if I could set a perimeter berm of earth around the outside of it that I used to plant the trees in and put plants on, that that would help mask the vehicle noise, the actual rumble from the tires on the street because that solid mass would cut some of that. And when you went inside the space, if you actually sat down, the cars would largely disappear. But if you stood up, you could see in and out. We've worked with many fountain designers and, and Fontanieri sort of, you know, this one is a group from California that came out of Disney originally, a group called WET. They had that idea about the fountain. They'd help me do these simple jets that I wanted in this arena that fell into these perimeter basins, which takes a certain, you have to be self-confident enough about yourself and your own ego to not have to want to drive and control everything and just let other people have their way about things. That's a real collaboration everybody actually contributes. In this case, they contributed a lot, part of which was the huge waterworks that makes it work. I was really happy that when Central Park uh, asked me, uh, the Conservancy, what was the tree I wanted to use, I suggested that we use American Buckeyes. It's, it's a horse chestnut native to North America, and, but unlike the European one, it has these beautiful, tall, golden, creamy flowers instead of pink. And it's not like the Asian one, it's, it's the American chestnut. We did have some interesting issues about the lighting. It says, I, I didn't want, again, lots of poles everywhere. So we worked with a wonderful lighting designer named Hervé Des, Descotes. He gave us the idea of putting these little blue lights underneath the bench, but now have been copied by everybody all over the place. But when we did it there, it was like, wow, this little light, the benches float at night and they kind of light that area of the, the, the plaza. And then he did just a few lights that focus the, like theatric, it's like theater, you know, they focus on the main monument. Columbus Circle, like all the projects that I've done that people are interested in and that I'm so proud of, whether it's the Getty Center or Bryant Park or something else, are usually the collaboration of a series of very skilled people who work well together. And Columbus Circle is a good example of that. And, and I, it, if you go there now, you can go there in the middle of the night and you'll see all these young people who say, I'll meet you at Columbus Circle. It's just amazing and people love it. It's full of people day and night, year round.